What's up guys? I'm Ben and this is Kame Trick. It's the channel that bridges the gap between sim drifting and real life drifting. Here we enjoy both and welcome back to another video on how to get started in sim drifting in Assetto Corsa with mods. This playlist is going to show you basically everything you need to know to get started, learn the basics, and have an awesome sim drifting experience. So we're going to cover how to set up your monitor, your audio device, and actually bind all the buttons in your sim hardware to be able to use it for playing Assetto Corsa. With that said, we'll jump right into it. So if you followed my last suggestion, down here in your taskbar, you're going to have Assetto Corsa Content Manager pinned. We'll click it. So to get there, we go to settings. And then level two is just settings. And then we'll go to Assetto Corsa for our level three. And then we're gonna go through this list. For uh, our monitor, you're gonna go to the video tab. And you are going to select your monitor resolution. So I'm on a 2K 1440p, 144 uh, refresh rate single monitor. If you're on 1080s, you're going to open up this list and you're going to find your monitor in here. If you are not able to find it, or if you've got a really interesting setting, you can also select custom and you can hand type in whatever you need to. Uh, if you're on triple monitors or VR, the rendering mode here, you're going to be able to click it and select triple screens, for example or Oculus Rift or early VR. Your settings in here will also determine how challenging it is for your machine to render a lot of the visuals for the game. Although there are other settings as well when we get into custom shaders patch, which will be in a future video. But this uh, gives you the start. So for me, uh, I typically run these quality settings higher. However, because I'm also streaming very frequently, I've turned it down to medium so that I get a little bit better performance out of my system while it renders for me on triple monitors and encodes the stream. Uh, that's a fair bit because I don't have a separate streaming PC. The gaming PC does the streaming as well. Next, we're going to hop down into view and UI. There's not a whole lot here, but your units, if you're uh, used to miles per hour, this is where you get to select that. If you want uh, metric, you can select it here as well. A couple of other settings that I think are useful to know about are your options here under view to hide the driver's arms so that you just see the wheel. If you don't even want to see the wheel at all, uh, which would mostly be for folks who have a monitor setup that's very close to their wheel and you can see your own wheel and you just want to see the dash you can hide the steering wheel here and you can also set up how quickly the view shifts from left to right when you use the buttons which we're going to map here in a second to look left and look right uh, in game next we'll come into audio audio is pretty straightforward you're going to select your uh, audio device this should be the same menu that you see when you are using audio anywhere else in your computer one thing that's kind of handy you can adjust your engine volume specifically, and you can also, using this opponent slider, adjust the volume of the other cars on the track with you. So especially when you get into different mod cars, some of them are louder than others. So you might find that guys you're tandeming with just sound really loud and it's quite distracting. Uh, and in real life, we don't get to turn them down, but uh, in this, you can actually adjust them if it's uh, a little bit too much. So that's all we need to do for audio. And then the big one is to come down into controls. All of the key bindings that you need to use your hardware, whether you're on a gamepad, keyboard and mouse, or a wheel, are going to be put in here. If you're on a wheel, you may be able to select this default button down at the bottom. Go to built-in presets and select your wheel here. That's a good place to start if you want to. I'm just going to leave this on default though and set it up from scratch. So if you were on a keyboard and mouse, you would check all of these settings. If you wanted to bind something different, you would click and then you'd click the button on your controller and it would lock that in. Uh, and you'll want to go through all of these menus. So the main is pretty obvious. Additional, move through, looking at system, looking at patch as well, and basically activate what you want. I'm on a wheel. You're probably on a wheel too if you're into sim drifting. So for me, I actually have to get my wheel physically. And here it is. It's a pretty cool setup. This is actually a detachable Xbox hub that Fanatec makes, which is the gear that I use. It's got buttons on it so that you retain all of your control settings and it's got a quick release as well. So we'll pop it on there. 
Of course, I'm assuming you already have everything plugged in and uh, you're ready to just power it on. Once it's booted up, we're basically going to click through all of these menus, starting with our axis. Now the axis is going to be your steering, your uh, pedals, e-brake if you've got one. So in order to do that, we're going to come over here and click steering where it says click to assign. Then it's going to wait for input and any of the axis that you touch are going to become your steering. So we want to steer in any direction. And as soon as we do, it's going to log that this axis here left to right is our steering. And you'll see there's this little indicator here and it will follow the wheel along as we steer to the left or to the right. Here you can adjust your degrees of rotation and there are other settings as well to adjust the uh, basically force feedback in addition to whatever uh, your wheels force feedback software lets you set up as well. Next up are our pedals. So I'm actually going to move my right leg out of the way just so you can see it a little bit in uh, the camera to my right. So you're going to click on throttle and then you're going to press the throttle down. And then you should be able to see the gas get adjusted. I'm going to click brakes. I'm going to press the brakes down. And it's going to recognize the brakes. For my kit, it takes an insane amount of force to actually press the brakes. Like, I'm pressing pretty hard and it's not even at 50%. So, me personally, I actually turn down the end point from 100%, which is the maximum possible force lower until I can essentially fill this up. You don't want it to where when you press as hard as you would in your real car, you only get, you know, like 20% of your brakes. You're going to be flying off the road all the time. And likewise, you don't want it to be super weak to where you're instantly locking the brakes up because you'll lock the brakes up prior to full. You'll lock them up somewhere over here, depending on what all you're doing with the car. So you need to play with this until Standing on the brakes pretty aggressively locks it, but you get a good amount of feeling. Um, and if you have a weaker brake pedal, or if you're just really strong and you work out a lot, I don't know, uh, you may not need to do that, but this is what I do. Next for clutch, we'll continue along in the same way. We'll press the clutch in, and you should be able to see that axis go as well. And then finally handbrake, we'll click, and then if you have a handbrake, and I hope you do, you can grab it and pull up on it and it's going to map that axis as well and you'll be able to see that. So this Fanatec handbrake is pretty cool because it's actually got a axis to it so I can get a dynamic amount of pressure applied to the rear brakes. Next up we need to bind buttons for our shifter over here and that's in the next menu over. So we're going to move from axis over to the right to buttons. And starting right at the top, we've got our shifters. If you were just using a sequential shifter, you'd basically do next gear and previous gear. Uh, me personally, I like to run my setup with an H pattern shifter because I just love traditional manual transmissions. So I'm going to select use H shifter, and then you're going to manually assign each gear. So to start out, make sure that you're in neutral, just like in a real car when you're starting. And we're going to select first gear click to assign, then shift into first gear. And you'll see when I do, it has logged button 14 as being first. And it actually has this little red indicator here to show that it sees me shifting into first. We're gonna proceed to do that for all the gears. So second, seventh, which on mine you push down and move far over, and reverse, which on mine you push down I move over in the other direction to the left. That takes care of all the essentials for your wheel pedal shifter and e-brake, but there are still a few other buttons that I recommend you check out. First of all is the turbo. You can actually adjust the turbo power of the car uh, while you're in game actively driving if the mod supports it. And basically every mod that I've ever played does unless the car has no turbo whatsoever. Uh, for me, I have buttons on my wheel. And this one, if you look in the right-hand camera, is a little spinner. So I actually like to use it for my turbo, but you could bind it to a keyboard, anything you really want. So I'm going to click increase, and I'm going to spin it to the right, and it's going to log that. And then I'm going to click decrease, and I'm going to spin it to the left. 
Another thing you probably want to add unless you are on VR is setting up your glance left, right, and possibly back button, as well as your change camera button. All these view buttons are really handy. Next, we'll move on to system. A couple key things I wanna draw your attention to here in the system menu. Uh, first of all is teleport to pits. This is an absolute game changer. Imagine that you're in a tandem train, you're in the lead, and you tap your tail against the wall, and the car just eats into the wall and starts doing a barrel roll. And you know that behind you, there's like 10 guys doing this rad tandem and you don't want to screw them up because they're just going to plow into you and everybody's going to die and it's going to be terrible. In normal Assetto Corsa, you have to come to a full and complete stop, then hit escape and then select uh, go to the pits in order to get out of their way. That's never going to work because you're busy flopping through the air. They're going to hit you. You'll keep moving through the air and it's just going to be a real mess. So teleport to pits lets you bypass all that and with one click of a button, no matter what's happening, whether you're on your roof, whether you're just chilling, uh, no matter what, you instantly teleport to the pits and if you ever see somebody driving on YouTube or Twitch and somebody in front of them wipes and then just disappears and they go right through like nothing ever happened, they're using Content Manager and they're using Teleport to Pits. So if you're on a wheel, you're actually going to click this right hand set of columns under Teleport to Pits. So it's not this button with Control Plus, that's keyboard obviously for control. You're going to click here and then you're going to map a button to it like so. Uh, setup in pits is similar. That's going to take you not just to the pits, but actually into the setup window. My cameras are in the way of this one, so I'm going to cut them for one second. Down at the very bottom, uh, another handy thing to just know is show damage display or toggle damage display. If you are wanting to stream or record content about a set of Corsa, every time that you lock up the brakes, that's considered tire damage because you're flat spotting the tire and it just takes away from the visual quality of your stream or the uh, video that you're creating. So you can actually turn that off. Uh, I believe it's by pressing control J. I always make sure I toggle that off. And once you toggle it off once, it will remember that even if you close a set of course, uh, shut down the computer, open it up a week later, it'll stay off. Next, we'll take a look at patch. There's really just some fun things in here, like you can map turn signals or turn on your hazard lights if you get into the rain effects, which I think only work in the cockpit view. You can actually adjust the windshield wipers. Um, just, you know, fun stuff. You can play with that. I might make videos on it in the future. And last but not least is force feedback where you can adjust force feedback settings here. Once you are happy with your settings, you can actually save them as a preset by clicking down here, save preset. For example, you could save this as demo and save your presets. And now, you know, you might have a preset for VR. And if we want to go back to the settings that I just put in, we just select demo and we're good to go. Uh, one final note, sometimes for me personally, I find that even though I've got my buttons bound, uh, when I start a set of Corsa through Content Manager, the throttle is not very responsive. It'll be like just pegged, like I'm giving it full gas all the time. Um, this is kind of a normal known issue. That's just one of the things that's a little bit clunky about Content Manager. You just sometimes have to double check that your binding is still logged. Leave a like if you have any more questions. Hop into the Kametrick Discord link down in the description and ask the community there. We can make sure that we get you all set up. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot, guys. Peace.